if you had somebody like Joel Osteen saying, look, when, when people criticize me for living extravagantly as a minister, I'm just helping out poor people in my family. Um, no, that's not how that works. You, helping out people in your family, I mean, Jesus even says that in the gospel. If you give good things to your children, even, even, even evil people know how to do that. That's not a testament to your moral fortitude. That's just silly. And so she says, oh, I, I'm supporting black people with my money. I, I see that as my family's money. I'm giving it to them. Um, does your family really have to live in a $1.4 million mansion? Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. Patricia Colors, who is the... Colors or Colors? I'm not sure how to say her name. I, I think it's Colors. But she is one of the co-founders of the Black Lives Matter movement. You may remember her from a clip we did in A Daily Dose of Stupid a while back where she was talking about how she was a trained Marxist. This is something that she constantly brags about. She, she makes no bones about it. She is a Marxist. She is a socialist. And that's her goal with the Black Lives Matter movement. It is a movement that is rooted in socialism. Well, it turns out that USA Today, uh, and in reaction to the New York Post, did some fact-checking on this and apparently found that, that it actually is true. This is the USA Today fact-checker on some real estate that she's been buying. You know, for a Marxist, she seems to have pretty nice digs. So this is USA Today fact checker. Her Los Angeles properties cost $510,000. Another Los Angeles home ran her $590,000. A suburban Atlanta property was purchased for $415,000. And then there was another one that they couldn't confirm, but it's another one in LA from Topanga Canyon that apparently cost $1.4 million. Now here's the thing. USA Today said that they could not confirm it, but in an interview later that day, she did confirm that she owned that property. So you are looking at right there roughly $3 million just in real estate and four homes all across the United States for this person. But she's a Marxist. Isn't she supposed to not like property and not like having nice things for yourself? I mean, you, you would think that based on her stated ideology. Well, apparently there were people that were pointing this out. This is an interview that was done with Mark Lamont Hill. He used to be with CNN. Um, he's on the Black News Network, Black News Channel now, I think is what it's called, which uh, is funny because if there was a white news channel, you, people would lose their crap. But nonetheless, this is an interview she did with him trying to explain all of the various extravagant homes that she owns. Organizers should get paid for the work that they do. They should get paid a living wage. Um, and the fact that the right-wing media is trying to um, create hysteria around um, my spending is uh, frankly racist and sexist. Just as predictable as the tide, the Black Lives Matter activists, the second that anybody is even mildly critical of her, oh, it's, it's because they're racist and sexist. Well, how is it racist? Say well, I don't know, but it's racist and sexist. I can tell you that right now. They're saying mean things about me. The only reason that someone would ever do that is because they're racist and sexist. It's an interesting thing that people who have just sort of engrossed themselves into this victimized mentality, they can attribute literally any personal flaw to other people just being racist and sexist against me. It's an incredible way to live. It really is. I, do I don't understand the, uh, the cognitive dissonance and the sort of mental gymnastics you have to go through to actually believe this. But apparently she believes that anybody calling her out on this is racist and sexist. But I can prove that that's not the case pretty easily. You may recall that I and conservatives all over the country were doing exactly the same thing to Bernie Sanders. Because Bernie Sanders, who claims to be a socialist and a disciple of Karl Marx and, and doesn't believe in property and nobody should be allowed to have property and it's it's immoral for the top 1% to have so much wealth. That guy evidently has three houses, one that's in uh, Martha's Vineyard, which is like 
the most expensive place to live, well, not the most expensive, but one of the most expensive places to live in the country. And he's got two homes in Vermont. We called him out for that. And uh, Bernie ain't black, nor is he a lady. He's Jewish. I mean, ethnically, he's not religiously Jewish. But that's about it. And I've done the same thing with Nancy Pelosi, who is a white lady. When she opens up her giant tub of designer ice cream, I mean, the Trump campaign literally made an ad out of that. This isn't something that conservatives are doing because she's a black woman. They're doing it because you're inconsistent with your belief system. You claim to be a Marxist who believes that having property and living extravagantly is immoral and wrong, unless you do it. That's the hypocrisy that we're calling out. And even though I'm not a big fan of Mark Lamont Hill, to his credit, he did actually point this out and ask her about it. And so this is his follow-up question, which, uh, you know, not really politically on board with him, but Mark Lamont Hill actually doing the right thing here. There's mm -hmm. also a critique, though, from the left that would say, um, if you are a trained Marxist, if we're talking about a certain kind of radical politic, that extravagant homes of any sort or multiple properties of any sort is itself contradictory to the ideology that you hold. And so it's not about having money per se, but that it's about uh, or about property per se, but it's about there being a potential contradiction between your express politics and your lived practice. Sure. And I think that is a critique that is um, wanting. And I say that because um, the 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 way that I live my life is in direct support to black people, including my black family members, uh, first and foremost. And uh, for so many black folks who are able to invest um, in themselves and their community, they choose to invest in their family. And that's what I've chosen to do. Um, I have a child, I have a brother that has severe mental illness that I take care of. Um, I support my mother um, and I support many other family members of mine. And so I see um, uh, my money as not my own. <laughs> I see it as um, my family's money as well. <laughs> if, if I were writing a parody, making fun of Marxism, and I were the one scripting this entire interview, I could not up, have come up with an answer that, that was that rich and funny. I couldn't have done it. If I were scripting the whole thing just to make fun of and point out the flaws in Marxism, I couldn't have come up with an answer better than the one that she just gave. Look, as I said from the onset of this, no one has a problem with you being successful. Nobody has a problem with you using money to help your family. That's what a good, responsible person should do. The issue is that your stated value system decries that. The problem isn't you having lots of houses. It's the same thing with Bernie Sanders. I've had people say, yeah, but you, you know, you were a supporter of Donald Trump and, and he's incredibly rich and has all these properties. Yeah, but Donald Trump's not talking about how evil it is to do that. In fact, he was weirdly kind of proud of it. But the same standard applies here. When Bernie, Sa the reason that I pick on Bernie Sanders for living extravagantly is because of his stated value system, that it's wrong for rich people to exist, that there should not be a country that even exists where that you can have millionaires and billionaires. You'll notice now he only criticizes billionaires because now he is a millionaire. And so he's moved from millionaires and billionaires to just billionaires, just the billionaires are the bad ones. But anyway, the same thing is going on here. We're not pointing out that having property is wrong. We're not saying that it's wrong to have multiple houses or to, to live extravagantly if, if you've made your money honestly. What we are pointing out is that you say that you're a Marxist that believes in all these things well, and, until you're the one that has to do it. This goes back to what I've said for a very long time. Socialism is for the people, not the socialists. Joseph Stalin didn't starve, but several million of his people did. Uh, we saw in Venezuela earlier this year that Maduro, he's there eating empanadas while the average person in his country has lost 28 pounds because they're starving to death. Yeah, he hadn't missed a meal. Have you noticed he's not lost any weight? There's a reason for that. The Marxists at the top always do this. A lot of people will point out that this is inconsistent, but the truth is it actually is kind of consistent because this is what Marxists always do, but she's trying to make the point that, no, no, there are black people in my family. 
And so because of that, when I'm supporting them, I really am giving the money to black people, which is such a load of crap. I, I, I mean, that would be like, that would be like a, a, a super rich evangelist minister like Joel Osteen, um, who's a fraud on a number of levels, but I won't get into that today. I'm just using him as, a, as an example. When you had somebody, if you had somebody like Joel Osteen saying, look, I, when, when people criticize me for living extravagantly as a minister, I'm just helping out poor people in my family. Um, no, that's not how that works. You, helping out people in your family. I mean, Jesus even says that in the gospel. If you give good things to your children, even 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 evil people know how to do that. That's not a testament to your moral fortitude. That's just silly. And so she says, oh, I, I'm supporting black people with my money. I, I see that as my family's money. I'm giving it to them. Um, does your family really have to live in a $1.4 million mansion? I mean, it seems to me you could get by with a hundred thousand dollar house pretty easily or buy lots of different houses for them that uh i don't i don't think any family needs a 1.4 million dollar house and here's the thing like i said don't have a problem with somebody living in a big extravagant house as long as they're not telling me that it's wrong to do that <laughs> that's the disconnect here but ultimately it is something that is a aversion to her own stated values and if you don't believe me We'll go straight to Karl Marx himself, the Communist Manifesto, Pillar 1. The abolition of private property in land and application of all rents and land to the public purpose. Hmm, kind of sounds like a Marxist would know that, and a Marxist would be against having extravagant private property and instead having it just belong to the community at large. That seems to be the principle that Marx espouses. Let's look at Pillar 3. The abolition of all rights of inheritance. Wait a second... You can't pass things on to your family in Marxism. You're not supposed to create family wealth. You're supposed to abolish all inheritance that once you die, it just goes with you. You're not supposed to support your family. But I thought she was a trained Marxist. Oh, but it's for my family. Okay, I'm sorry, but as a Marxist, that doesn't work. You can't do that as a Marxist. You're not supposed to provide for your family. The state is supposed to provide for everybody, including your family. You're not in charge of them. The state is. And so you're not supposed to spend extravagantly on them. You're not supposed to be able to pass things down to them. That's something for the people at the top only. Marxism decries that. And furthermore, not only Marx, but her own organization says that that's a bad thing. And you don't have to take my word for it. Let's just look at the Black Lives Matter website. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. Huh. Well, that's bizarre. Shouldn't Patricia Cullors just open her house to everybody in the community? Yeah, random black guy that's a heroin addict off to the side here, you can come in. Oh wait, she couldn't really do that because all of her homes are in super nice gated white communities, which again, don't have a problem with, but it seems kind of contradictory to her stated value system. And you know, her own organization's website. According to them, you're not supposed to support your family. It's supposed to be a village, a community. You're all supposed to take care of kids and raise them together. You're not supposed to have family responsibilities and duties. And, and by the way, you're also supposed to provide for other people in your community. You think Patricia Cullors has random homeless people coming into her house anytime that she wants? I rather doubt it. This woman is a fraud and a hypocrite and should be called out for it. And thankfully she has been. And when she came to defend herself, she just made it worse. But ultimately, as I said, this is not a contradiction because this is what Marxists do. Rules for thee, but not for me. You're not allowed to have nice things and allowed to have property. That's for the enlightened despots at the top of the food chain. You unwashed little people. You're the ones that aren't supposed to have property. It's greedy for you to have a house that's larger than you actually need. It's greedy for you to want to raise your own children or to provide for your family because that goes against Marxism. But when I do it, it's perfectly okay. This is who Marxists are. Make no mistake. <laughs>
This is usually the part of the video where I ask you to like this video and subscribe to my show and click the notification bell. Does that guarantee you're going to get notifications when I post new content? Honestly, the way that YouTube censors conservatives, I really doubt it. But you know what liking and subscribing does do, for sure? It ticks off the dark cyber overlords at Google when they see those likes and subscriptions despite shadow banning my conservative content. So you really should like and subscribe, if nothing else, just to stick it to them.